Biochar is a solid byproduct from the breakdown of organic matter under high heat and low oxygen. It has many potential applications and has become a popular topic within the research community. My name is John Miedema. Uh, I've got a company that I call Biological Carbon. We're located in Philomath, Oregon here um, and at a timber yard. So there's a lot of biomass coming in here and what I do is I take it and I put it into these machines here, there's a gasifier and a pyrolytic retort. And the point is, is that we're making carbon from the biomass in a controlled manner. We have excess energy that um, can be utilized for other purposes. Um, but my main focus right now is primarily studying the carbon that I make. I've been using it for nutrient cycling in agriculture, to increase nutrient cycling in agriculture, and to do remediation work, capturing toxins in stormwater. Oh, that in our region, biomass is gonna get used as an energy source. And what I'm trying to do is prove that there's a, fa a fraction of that energy source that we can turn into uh, carbon as opposed to driving it all the way to ash and find uses for it in society. And if, uh, you know, if we do that, then the economics are going to drive harvesting carbon from the atmospheric cycle. So what I do is I you know, out here we have biomass that's rotting, that's underutilized, and what I do is I take that and I put it into the system. So, so what happens on kind of a life cycle analysis, um, this material has uh, an approximate, you know, 10 year life cycle before it would be rotting and fluxing the CO2 that had been absorbed from uh, photosynthesis back into the atmosphere. Now when I take it and I put it into the system, I hold on to somewhere around 25% of that carbon as a stabilized form that uh, is what we call recalcitrant. It has half-lives in the order of 500 to 1,000 years. And if we can take that and then utilize it and put it into the soil, what we end up doing is having a, a methodology for harvesting carbon from the atmosphere through photosynthesis. So my name is Miles Gray. I'm a graduate research assistant in soil science and water resources engineering. And I've generally been looking at ways to use char uh, in high value applications. So the idea with char is that you can take this waste biomass, produce energy and produce a uh, char product that is resistant to decay in the environment and has some other environmental benefit associated with it. And, so, and some of the things that we're targeting in, in our group right now um, are Applications that require water entry into the, the char. So things that we've been looking at are for using char for stormwater filtration or contamination remediation. So char is a porous media. Uh, it has a lot of different pores. Water can move into those pores and it's really similar to activated carbon. And activated carbon is already used in contaminant remediation. It's a little bit different. It's made to different specifications. But there's a lot of potential that you can use char sort of made to a less technically advanced level for a much lower price point and use it for applications that are really out of the economic feasibility of activated carbon. Uh, one example of this would be for stormwater filtration. Right now it's really too expensive to use activated carbon in stormwater filtration. Um, so there's potential to use biochar. In general, most stormwater treatment these days is through sand filtration, slow sand filtration, and also through bioswales. Those technologies are great in that they remove a lot of turbidity, they reduce temperature, um, and with the turbidity comes a lot of contaminants that are, that are sorbed onto uh, soil particles such as phosphorus, but they really don't treat things like dissolved contaminants such as heavy metals, uh, pesticides, herbicides, gasoline constituents, other hydrocarbons. Those things are dissolved contaminants on the molecular level. They generally move right through sand filtration, unless they're eaten by microbes, which can happen, but it's not a huge factor in sand filtration. However, char and other activated carbons have these little tiny, have a lot of porosity, but part of that porosity are these nanometer sized pores. And in those pores, a lot of these contaminants are sorbed very strongly, permanently or semi-permanently, semi long periods of time. So by using these materials, we can set up a second, a second portion of, of filtration to remove these dissolved contaminants that are on the molecular scale. So the idea long term would be to make filters that maybe have a sand filter first followed by a char filter. That is, you remove the turbidity, 
and the biological components of that contamination. And then it flows into your char filter where it really removes those dissolved contaminants, which can be highly toxic to ecosystems and, and humans, but are really at this point pretty hard to remove. And currently activated carbon can do that, but activated carbon costs around $500 a drum. We think we can make this material, these char materials for much less than that. Uh, so it really is trying to make a similar product to activated carbon, but at a much lower price point. My name is Perry Morrow. I'm in the Water Resources Science program here at Oregon State University. My research focused on finding the saturated hydrologic conductivity of the char, or the ease at which water flows through a porous medium. This was done using Darcy's Law. I manipulated the equation to find the K value, or the saturated hydrologic conductivity, by finding the Q value or the volumetric flux rate, finding the total head for each of the different flow rates, as well as manipulating the bed depths for each char. By finding the K value, people can predict the flow rate through the biochar as a potential biochar filter in stormwater remediation. My name is Camille Moyers and I am a junior in the Wood Science and Engineering Department at Oregon State University and over the last year I've been working on biochar research. The purpose of this research was to gain a better understanding of the potential for biochar in the filtration markets in Oregon and Washington. We conducted phone and face-to-face -face interviews with industry professionals and big box stores. Primarily, we looked at companies that are struggling to meet benchmarks for the 1200Z, which is a permit within Oregon that requires companies to meet benchmarks um, as far as their pollutant outputs in stormwater and industrial water. What we got from this research is that there is a need for a product that works and helps them to meet the benchmarks of the 1200Z permit. Um, they need more information about biochar. The research is kind of lacking right now and they want to make sure that before they invest in making a switch to a product like biochar that it's comparable to something like activated carbon but is a less expensive alternative to activated carbon. Um, Everybody wants a product that works and they want a product that they can afford in the long term. And the interest for biochar is definitely out there. Uh, I think that biochar is a viable product, uh, has a lot of potential to go outside of just stormwater remediation and could potentially be used on a commercial scale um, in our homes, in our gutters, our downspouts, and not just in a big box or industrial application.